What up? PAT in the building. Back with another one. I'm going to just get right into it. So, as we all know, out there in the Matrix, Joe Rogan has got into some trouble. There's been talk about vaccine misinformation and apparently or supposedly that's what got him deplatformed whatever that means in addition to that it has been brought to the public's attention that your boy has been saying the n-word repeatedly now what's funny about this whole thing is and probably it's not so funny but i'm gonna just say it's funny because the straw that broke the camel's back wasn't the racism. No, what? It wasn't the racism. The straw that broke the camel's back for the powers that be was vaccine misinformation. It wasn't the N-word that was said over and over throughout multiple episodes nah it wasn't that it was vaccine misinformation and then the compilation video came out basically is the vaccine misinformation that played a part in getting some of joe rogan's episodes pulled from spotify now the n-word compilation video came about to dirty up his name and get people to stop supporting Joe Rogan. Now, I already spoke on my thoughts on a podcast that myself and two of my homies started, Naya Angel and E-Man, the good, the bad, and the truth podcast. I already spoke my thoughts in particular on this whole Joe Rogan situation a lot of people have their opinions on it a lot of people spoke their opinions on it I spoke mine so I already touched on my thoughts on that if you want to listen to the episode go on, go on the YouTube page look up is Joe Rogan a racist flat flat out you can look up the episode by looking up that title it's on my youtube channel and it's on the good the bad and the truth podcast youtube channel do subscribe to both channels by the way subscribe to my channel and then subscribe to the good the bad and the truth podcast channel quick plug but to get back on track i'm gonna get into why this whole joe rogan fiasco along with the countless karen videos and the media's fixation with racism will eventually desensitize everyone to racism I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again and you'll probably hear me say it again in the future but nothing happens in a vacuum nothing happens in a vacuum synchronicity is a very real thing and everything happens for a reason everything every single thing happens for a reason racism white supremacy has been an infinity war with an end game in mind it seems like racism just won't go away it's one of those things that's here to stay unfortunately racism adjusts to the current reality or paradigm that's it. Racism has been a hydra, a multiple-headed snake. When one head gets chopped off, 
another one pops out. For those of us who are initiated and have been initiated, we are already well aware of the history of the United States of America. We already know about slavery. We already know about the black codes. We already know about convict leasing. We already know about the eugenics movement. We already know about Jim Crow. We already know about mass incarceration. And we could go on and on and on about what we already know. While things change, things always stay the same. Mass incarceration is part of the new era of Jim Crow. It's basically the new Jim Crow. And that's a great book, by the way, by Michelle Alexander, The New Jim Crow. When we look at things like police brutality, gentrification, and the educational system, those are all things that have assaulted black people in one way or another. With all of that being said, we have been told, we have been sold, and we have been indoctrinated to believe that we live in a post-racial society. We, and when I say we, I'm talking about black people. We feel that since we're allowed to integrate into mainstream society, that means that racism isn't as big of a deal as it used to be. Mass incarceration, gentrification, and lack of wealth and resources say otherwise. Really, we've been living in an era of covert racism. Not so much overt racism, even though there's a lot of overt racism going on. I mean, the internet doesn't lie in that regard. But really, it's a lot of covert racism. Not so much overt where it's visible to the naked eye, but covert racism is the law of the land. Slavery, mental or otherwise, continues till this day. The 13th Amendment allows for slavery to continue physically, but not through the plantation, through the prison system. The prison system is just one in many plantations. The prison system is a plantation. The prison system is a different kind of plantation, but a plantation regardless. Now to go back to the overt racism, We've been able to see it firsthand because of the internet and all the videos that have continuously popped up showing racism, overt racism. Countless videos of cops brutalizing black people. Countless videos of racist white women calling 911 and making false police reports on black people. Basically, Emmett Till, the updated edition. Countless videos of racist people calling black people the N-word. Countless videos of black people being mistreated because of the color of our skin. We could go on and on and on and on. All of this obviously puts racism on full blast and it upsets people and rightfully so. But on the flip side, what these videos do is desensitizes the viewer. It desensitizes the viewer to how harmful racism is. It can desensitize people to the point of apathy, being apathetic towards racism. Obviously, there are people out there who are already apathetic towards racism. That's out there already, but the number is just going to grow. The number is just going to increase. It's just going to be more and more people becoming apathetic towards racism. 
It's also a well-known fact that frequent exposure to something will eventually desensitize you to whatever that something is that you've been constantly exposed to. If people are continuously inundated with black degradation, black brutality, and black death, that means that people will become less sensitive to all of that over a period of time. Desensitization removes empathy. Desensitization removes emotional responses to negative events and negative circumstances. With all of this in mind, racism and its harmful effects to black people has always been business as usual. Racism and its harmful effects towards black people has become something that people have gotten used to. In other words, people have just gotten accustomed to it. Also, let's be clear on something. We've seen and heard a lot of people say some racist shit during the Trump presidency. In addition to that, we've seen and heard people say some racist shit during the Obama presidency. Obviously, Barack Obama and Donald Trump are two completely different people. However, when each one of those guys was the president of the United States, we seen and heard a lot of people say some racist shit, even do some racist shit. Basically, we, we seen a lot of racists come out the woodwork. And we see it and we hear it because obviously it's going on out there in the real world, but we got the, the good old internet. We got the good old internet. We got the smartphones with the cameras. People are recording. So now everybody's getting a front row seat to the racism. Racism hasn't left the building. On the contrary, it's been in the building. We're just in the era of HD racism. We're in the era of high definition racism. Will Smith said it best when he said, racism isn't getting worse. It's getting filmed. That's it. That's the, that's the crux of it all right there. It's not getting worse. It's getting filmed. And it's been getting filmed even before the internet age. For those of us who are old enough, for those of us who've been around in the 90s, when we were old enough to watch TV in the 90s, we saw Rodney King get brutalized by the police. Now we got the Karen videos popping up all over the internet. We're hearing about racism within the NFL. And now we got the Joe Rogan N-word compilation video. Between all of that, and the reports of the racism that black people have received in the Ukraine, it is proof positive that racism, white supremacy, is part of the zeitgeist of today's era. And I'm not even finished. This whole thing about critical race theory. There have been talks in the matrix about critical race theory. Some people call it CRT. Regardless, critical race theory, this phony panic and hysteria about critical race theory is really just thrown out there in the mix so the powers that be can eventually whitewash history. They already been whitewashing history, but they just want to do it some more. There's all this fake panic about critical race theory and banning it. If these people have it their way, they will whitewash real history out of existence permanently. What the powers that be want to do is reaffirm white supremacy. They want to reaffirm white dominance. In order to do that, 
You have to rewrite history. You have to rewrite history in a way to make racism more palatable and more acceptable, for lack of a better term, to the status quo. I'm going to say it again. You have to rewrite history in a way to make racism more palatable and more acceptable to the status quo. You have to rewrite history in a way for black people to continue to be seen as second class citizens. You have to rewrite history in a way to get black people to stay comfortable as second class citizens. And I'm gonna just add this to the mix. No one should have been surprised at how black people were mistreated during this whole Russia and Ukraine conflict. White supremacy is global. Black people are mistreated all over the planet, not just in the United States of America. I mean, peep game. There are color caste systems in different countries all over the globe. Color caste systems in different countries. It is the lighter skinned people of those countries who are in superior positions to the darker skinned people in those same countries. All in all, to circle the wagons back to this whole Joe Rogan N-word compilation video, it didn't happen in a vacuum. It's out there for a reason. I mean, people could say they want to cancel Joe Rogan and all this other shit, but let's be real. He's in a powerful enough position where he can't be canceled. He's not going to be canceled. But see, this isn't just about Joe Rogan and this N-word compilation video. It's bigger than that. But the overall point is that video on top of all the media coverage, mainstream media, alternative media, whichever media, it's out, all this is out there for a reason. All of this is out there for a reason. That reason is desensitization. It is about desensitizing the masses to racism, white supremacy. Now, of course, there's going to be people who are upset, who are angry, who are outraged, who feel like they want to do something about it. But let's be real. After all the, the, the feelings and the emotions of anger and, and outrage after all of that just goes down, it's back to business as usual. People just go back on the treadmill, moving, but staying in place. Really, they never got off the treadmill. People just stay on the treadmill. There seems to be a, a forward movement, but we're staying in the same exact place. There's no actual progression. But, of course, some folks out there will put certain moves or certain actions or certain acts. A-C-T-S. Acts. Not A-X-E. A-C-T-S. Acts. Certain acts. Because that's what some people do. They act. There's a lot of actors out here. I'm not going to get into all that though. But yeah, it, it's going to come under the guise of progression. But really, it's just about keeping black people and really the masses in general. Because let's be clear, the game is played against everybody, not just black people. But unfortunately, black people 
get the worst of it. We get the worst end of it. We get the brunt of it. But the powers that be, the elite, the establishment, whatever you want to call them, they don't give a fuck about anybody that's below them. That goes for white, Asian, whoever, Latino, it doesn't matter. They don't give a fuck about anybody that's below them. Yeah, you might get something that looks like progression. You might get a little, you might get a bone thrown at you every now and again. Make you feel good. But when it's all said and done, all they're doing is just reaffirming their position while keeping you in your position, keeping you in your place. That's it. One of the first steps to dealing with all of this is to deal with the truth of the matter, to deal with the stone cold reality of the matter. And then at that point, we can really start figuring out a way to deal with all this. But you're not going to deal with it with your head in the sand. You're not going to deal with it by ignoring the harsh reality. If I have to put it that way, I might be talking about the bad and the ugly, but there's also good. Everything's not just bad and ugly. There's also the good, but there is the good, the bad and the ugly. We got to deal with all three. It's that simple. We all want the good. We want to make sure everything stays good. Everything's good. What's good? Everything's good. You know, everything's all good. We want the good. We want the goods. <laughs> but we got to deal with the bad and the ugly, unfortunately. Ignoring it is not dealing with it. So just my thoughts on everything that's going on out there in the matrix. Maybe you've been enlightened. Maybe you haven't been enlightened. Regardless, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Hopefully, you keep doing what you're doing as long as it's in a positive direction. And we just got to make it do what it do. So on that note, 